Hi, hello you guys. I would like to introduce my personal considerations about why Japanese people can't speak English. And especially, I'd like Japanese students studying English very seriously to watch this video. So I speak English here. Also, I created Japanese subtitles for this video. So please feel free to turn the subtitles on if you have any troubles understanding what I say. And there's one more thing I would like to say. I am not a great English speaker, nor an expert of English. So I would just like to tell English beginners some useful information and hints to study English from my experience I had so far. So please tolerate my mistakes of English. Current situation in English skill ranking of Japanese people. First of all, before I show you the reasons, I would like to mention a fact of English ranking of Japanese people. According to EF English Proficiency Index by EF Education First, English skill ranking of Japanese people in 2018 is 49th out of 88 countries. Japan is ranked on a very low place, although generally Japanese people spend about 1,000 hours studying English in junior and senior high school in average. And the students are blessed with lots of educational materials of English. What do you think the reasons why Japanese people can't speak English? I would show you my search results and the problems I found were much deeper than I expected. The reason one, Juken system. Juken system might be the biggest reason why Japanese people can't speak English. About Juken system, I referred a book, Why is Education Necessary for People? by Naoki Komuro and Rikio Shikama. The book says it is a strong request from the Japanese administration to Japanese society to build a hierarchy pyramid with the students of the University of Tokyo on top. Because some of these students are the highest class bureaucrat candidates and the device to build the pyramid is Juken system. Are your students familiar with your deviation value, right? I was also when I was a student. The paper tests are measuring where you are in the hierarchy and Juken is a very useful system to find smart people to sit on top of the social pyramid. And of course, I understand that the highest class bureaucrats should be intelligent, but I think Juken system has also a serious problem. Why? And what is it? Let's see the history a little before getting down to the main point. And it will be a little long story, so please feel free listening to this part with fast forwarding or skipping. Some scholars say the origin of Juken system is from Chinese Kakyo system. About the history of Kakyo, I refer a book, The Speech of Religion by Naoki Komuro. According to the author of this book, Kakyo is the civil service examination of China. The examination of bureaucracy had been conducted for about 1,300 years in China from 958 to 1905. The examinations of Kakyo were extremely difficult to pass and some candidates pass the examination after they become like 60 years old at long last. Until about 13th century, this Kakyo system worked very well to build a countries of prosperity in China. And some outstanding bureaucrats were also produced by Kakyo. For example, Wen Tianshan passed the first prize of Kakyo and when Southern Song Dynasty was on the way of collapse, he continued to resist until the end, so he was praised as the greatest vassal. But unfortunately, no matter how good the system is, it may be corrupted with the times. Yongle Emperor, who was the third emperor of the Ming Dynasty at the beginning of the 15th century, did an amazing thing. He enacted the national textbook Shisho Taizen and Gokyo Taizen, 
based on Neo-Confucianism called Shushigaku in Japanese, based on the teachings of Zushi and his followers. So the organizers of the examinations started to make both of the references and the answer books for the examinations. This fact dramatically expanded the number of candidates of Kakyo examinations because it was the only way to be bureaucrats and only the bureaucrats can get power, prosperity and honor in one hand. So many people in this age of China studied so hard just to pass Kakyo examinations. So this fact also has resulted in the quality deterioration of bureaucrats. So the, the point is that although at the beginning of Kakyo history, there were some people who really deserved to be the prime minister. But as a result of the corruption of Kakyo system, only the persons who wrote the exemplary answers according to the texts started to be supposed to pass the examinations. And they immersed in refining the exam skills rather than intelligence and aspiration. The candidates of Kakyo had always been educated to pass the Kakyo examination since they were small children. So some of them failed to grow their humanities enough and they became people with frail humanities in conditioned reflex. So these candidates of Kakyo in the corruption are sometimes called human beings like rats. When the Ming Dynasty came to an end, the Beijing castle was to be surrounded by the great army of Li Zuchen, although the Beijing castle was considered to be an impregnable. The bureaucrats opened the castle gate and allowed Li Zuchen to enter the castle. And at this time, the high-ranked bureaucrats of Ming screamed like, Hooray! Li Zichen, Hooray! And these bureaucrats easily surrendered to Li Zichen. Finally, the last emperor of Ming committed suicide. But none of the high-ranked bureaucrats died for the emperor. The theme of the classic Neo-Confucianism text of the examinations for the high-class bureaucrats were the training of the faithful retainer and loyal retainer. However, no matter how the candidates and the bureaucrats memorized the morals and ethics of the classics and passed the most difficult subject, the result was the decline and ruin of empire caused by the elite self-protections. How do you think about this historical fact? Sounds familiar with Jukan system and the political aspects of Japan? I am not an expert of history, so I would not discuss about Kakyo any deeper here, but please search it by yourself if you are more interested in the history of Kakyo system. This book, The Speech of Religion by Naoki Komuro, is very good to learn more about Kakyo. The author of this book also noticed that Juken and Kakyo are very similar because Japan imported Kakyo system as a role model of Juken system in Meiji period. March 20th, 1995 in Tokyo, Japan. A cult founded called Oumu Shinrikyo committed terrorist acts. Tokyo subway sarin attack, as some of you may know. The core leaders of Oumu Shinrikyo were mostly highly educated elites who were very successful in Juken system and graduates of famous universities in Japan. And these leaders also were sometimes called as human beings like vending machines. What do you guys think about these facts? Excuse me that I was off topic a little. I think these successful elites in Kakyo and Juken are specialists of information processing in a reflex manner. But the skill of information processing on Kakyo and Juken is just mechanical because there are always exemplary answers in the examinations. And many Japanese students are mostly trained grammar and vocabulary for Juken examinations in English education. But in language learning, mechanical information processing has a limit to be good speakers of the languages in a practical way 
because repeatings of communication between people are necessary to learn speaking skills of languages and the communication is not mostly mechanical. So I think Juken is one of the reasons why Japanese people cannot speak English although they spend so many hours to study English when they are students. In compulsory education, senior high school and universities, Juken English does not work well to be a good English speaker. The reason two, the evaluation system for students. I have discussed about the first reason so long, but the others are shorter than the first one. The second reason may be related to the first reason because the second one is also about the system of education. When the teachers evaluate Japanese students, they add points to the students only when the students answer correctly for the questions. I think that in education of languages especially, this way of evaluation does not improve the students' language skills well because for language learning, it is correct to foster the student's attitude of active writing or speaking. So the way only pointing out mistakes in grammar or pronunciation and rating the students low inhibits their development of a positive writing and speaking attitude. If the students could feel joy and happiness to communicate in English, their skill will grow better, but they cannot in the current Japanese education system of English. The evaluation system should be like that the teachers evaluate better and add points for students who have active attitudes to use English and the length of the time the students use English even if the student's English is wrong in grammar, pronunciations, and spelling, etc. In study of English speaking, a point deduction scoring system of paper skills such as English grammar, vocabulary, reading and writing does not work. The reason three, the absence of purpose to study English. In Japan, there is not a big difference of salary between high English skilled people and low English skilled people, for example. Of course, it is not only about salary to study something, but for example, Philippines have much higher English level than Japan, even it is an Asian country because Philippines has the big difference of salary between high English skilled people and low English skilled people. People in some countries learn English to survive. Also, people in Japan can manage their lives with no problem without English skills. So the point is, then what could the purpose be to learn English? And what do you want to do and to be after you learn English? For me, living in Europe is one of my dreams. So I wanted to work with people all over the world. And I also wanted to make friends abroad. That was the beginning uh, of why I started to study English. The reason for the linguistic distance between English and Japanese. This is also a big fact that Japanese and English are very far languages in grammars, characters, pronunciations. For example, Japanese language does not care about numbers in grammar, so Japanese people need more and more time to use English in an active way than European people who have close language backgrounds to English, for example. But the Japanese students can't because of the reasons I have mentioned already. The reason five, non-native teachers of English. If you would like to learn only grammar, vocabulary, reading and writing of English, you will be able to learn them on paper and with the support of non-native English teachers. Actually, it might be better that non-native English teachers teach these paper skills for Japanese students because teaching these paper skills in Japanese is more efficient for Japanese students, especially for beginners of English. But obviously, it will be the best if native English speakers or very close to native teach listening and speaking skills of English for Japanese students. Realistically, 
it seems difficult to secure enough number of native English teachers in the field of Japanese education. So at least the standard of qualifications for English teachers should be more strict, maybe. Anyway, I wonder if the teachers who do not speak English in their everyday lives can hardly offer good training of English speaking for Japanese students. The reason six, lack of the English speaking time and experience. This is also a big reason. Japanese people do not have much opportunity and have time to speak English. This one might be related to the second reason. In junior and senior high schools of Japan, students mostly study grammar, vocabulary, reading and writing in English classes. So this reason is simple and obvious. That's it for this time. Once I am thinking about all these reasons, they all look related, except the false reasons, don't they? What else do you think of any other reasons? Please post any comments with your ideas if you want, and of course it's okay to be in Japanese. So, maybe I will make another video about how to solve these problems to study English. So, thank you very much for watching. See you next time.